very much, Pascal. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Pascal, and all the organizing committee uh, for the kind invitation. That's a real pleasure to uh, uh, talk about uh, new UGLA uh, activity and uh, to focus uh, today on uh, Euphrosini. Uh, Euphrosini being not only uh, the sister of uh, UGLA in uh, in, in mythology, uh, but also the name of our new uh, digital uh, platform. So uh, first, uh, Aglai is, uh, as you said, um, a unique large-scale facility. It's an ion beam accelerator located, uh, the only one actually, located in the museum context, context uh, in uh, Palais du Louvre. And it's the only uh, ion accelerator that is uh, fully dedicated to heritage science. And it's been uh, compiling data on artworks uh, for 30 years. In 2017, uh, Aglae turned into a new Aglae, meaning that we totally automated the beam line, so now we can work 24 hours a day. And we also developed in this uh, Equipex uh, program uh, a new uh, multi-detection imaging system. It costs 2.6 uh, million euro and uh, uh, for functioning such uh, a large-scale facility, uh, it costs about 50,000 uh, euro a year. Um, this automation uh, made the data uh, come from 1.7 to 8.7 uh, teraoctet uh, produced uh, a year. The users that we have are not only uh, French uh, institutions, French uh, Ministry of Culture, but also research institutions, national ones, and also um, research teams coming from uh, Europe within uh, the European program, Iperion HS, that is now running, and uh, the ecosystem of such a machine, um, when we are uh, focusing on ion accelerators, of course, we are the only one doing this fully, but other accelerators, and some of them are on the, the maps, are dealing with uh, cultural heritage as well, even though it is not their only activity. Uh, in Italy, we are working with uh, the Labec in Florence and uh, Ciudad in uh, Lecce, and uh, New Aglae, Atomki, and Labec uh, are involved in the ARIS uh, infrastructure that is uh, being built uh, today. So we give access uh, to, uh, to, to, to our machines within the fixed lab uh, access, and we are working now um, for the DigiLab, so the data that should be uh, accessible for uh, users for other uh, way of uh, making research. So, okay, we invested uh, 2.6 million euros to automate this facility, but on the data point of view, actually, uh, we used to have a prehistoric management of this data. Uh, during the first lockdown, uh, we didn't have access to the servers, uh, so it was quite complicated. And uh, until uh, not so long time ago, uh, people were coming and we were asking them, well, for your data, come with a hard disk. So that was a little bit uh, strange for users coming to use an excellent machine, uh, unique machine uh, as a new Aglae. Uh, we also have a devoted Aglae team, uh, but we had a lot of frustration from uh, our users. The software suite was uh, very uh, appreciated, but not easily communicable. And a lot of time and data were lost in the transmission of data between uh, the, the users and the team. And finally, in a context where uh, Europe uh, pushes into open science, well, uh, we know how to produce data, but we don't know how to open them to uh, others. Uh, so, uh, there were uh, big issues about that. So, I came with all these problems to uh, the digital uh, workshop of uh, the French Ministry of Culture, and I got the privilege to get, to get uh, funds uh, for this Euphrosini uh, project. So, the first thing, the 
first chapter in this story was a three-month period of investigation. So we analyzed the context of the existing, we uh, tried to understand the data life cycle uh, from the genesis to the uh, storage, to the uh, sustainable storage of such data going through the process of data. We uh, made interviews of users, we made a questionnaire so that we have the most uh, objective uh, answers to our questions. And uh, after uh, the synthesis of uh, the, 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 this uh, study, we raised some elements for a solution and created an action plan. So the, the objectives were first to make the data accessible for the fixed lab users who are currently physically coming to the uh, accelerator. But of course, the uh, data that are produced by our fixed lab users they will be reused by others. Uh, of course, this is one of the, uh, of the most uh, uh, that people understand very easily. Here is a, a stained glass panel from, the new, uh, from Notre Dame at the New Aglaé facility. Of course, we hope we will never see these objects back in front of the beam because we don't want uh, Notre Dame to, to get fired once again. Uh, so, we have this data, so it is our um, duty to make this data, which is digital heritage, uh, to transfer it to uh, next generations, future generation of researchers and so forth. So we have to make our data fair, for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So the next chapter is dealing with the conception of our tool. So we had an idea of the perfect solution that was the Ferrari. Unfortunately, imagine uh, a unique interface that enables to do everything is technically impossible. Well, not impossible. We could make it, but in 10 or 15 years. So we don't have money and we don't have time. So we cannot propose such solution. So we have an alternative solution. If we cannot make a Ferrari, then we will try to make a skateboard and then transform it into a bicycle and so forth. So we'll go step by step. So uh, the alternative solution will deal with a remote access to data for the fixed lab users and then uh, the open database for the DigiLab uh, users. So how does it work? Well, the new Aglae uh, data are uh, put into the cloud, uh, so the, the raw data and the processed data. They, are, uh, they, they made the SIP for submission information package for the archivists. And um, we, sorry, we, are, we have to develop an, an, an app to uh, manage the users, the permissions, and uh, the projects. Then we will have to develop um, an interface to make uh, people reach not only their data, but also the software to process them. This will be the brick for the fixed lab users. Then the other brick for the DigiLab users will deal with the same, uh, the same um, data, but we should think about a uh, way of searching into the metadata to go to, uh, to reach this uh, data and also to, um, to think about how to uh, store our data uh, forever, if I can say so. So during this uh, conception, uh, we define the users processing and their interactions with the system. So we have different profiles and how they will uh, deal with uh, our platform. We made a huge work on our data models. We made a restitution of the data and metadata flows that are already existing. We defined the conceptual model that is represented here. Uh, it is centered around the experiments, but also, it also gives information on who did the experiments. The, of course, the uh, experimental uh, conditions, uh, what type of particle, the energy, what type of 
uh, of uh, detectors, the absorbers in front of the detectors and so forth, but also it deals with the objects that will be analyzed. Of course, we will not make databases of the objects that will be analyzed. We will plug to uh, databases such as uh, EROS in situ RMF uh, that already exist, that already have this type of information. So we also made our relational model that, is the, that gives the structure of the database for computerization. We worked on the new Aglaé semantic data model based on CDOC CRM and uh, BCO, which is the biochemistry ontology, and we uh, started to also to make the ion beam analysis ontology, which is, doesn't exist for the moment. We worked also with uh, uh, archivists uh, and decided to follow the Open Archives information system for the new Aglaé data. So the next uh, chapter, so we went into the construction uh, of such a platform. Um, the idea was to give the uh, platform to the users the soonest so that we get feedback from them. So on March the 18th, 2022, the prototype of Euphrosini 1.0 was given to the French FISLAB users. Uh, it only enabled them to reach their data, the raw or processed data, so they could download their data wherever they were uh, in the world. So 100% of fixed lab users didn't, don't need hard disk anymore. That was a very, very big step forward for our users. Then um, on the next uh, chapter for this construction, we worked on the virtual machines that will uh, launch the software suite so that people can, wherever they are, reach their data and process them with the, uh, the, the last versions of the software that we develop every day at the Aglaé facility. So we have two types of uh, virtual machines. One is a basic one for a single spot processing, and another one is a bigger one for imaging. And the fixed lab administrators, uh, that is to say the Aglaé team, decides on which machine will be uh, used uh, for uh, the data processing. Then we uh, made the software installation for uh, the, the Pixie and Piggy um, uh, analysis, uh, and we took this opportunity to get rid of uh, licensed software uh, whenever it was possible, so that we are really open science and uh, open source uh, data. Then uh, on December uh, the 22nd, 2022, Euphrosini 2.0 was launched, so uh, French lab, French fixed lab users could access not only to their data, but also to this virtual machine and they could process their data uh, remote. Uh, then, since uh, the beginning of 2023, uh, so we had huge work of debugging and fixing with the users, of course. Um, we worked on the interoperability, so now uh, the Euphrosini uh, platform is uh, not only in uh, English, so uh, all the European uh, uh, users can use it, uh, but there's also a link with the, the EROS platform, uh, which is the uh, C2RMF uh, database. Um, so it's operational since last Monday. So it's a breaking news just for you. And uh, we are at the very moment working on the transition to HDF5 data format, which is a, a format that is used for uh, big data in uh, astronomy, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, accelerators and so forth, even though we are not producing big data actually, but it's a, a format that is very uh, clever and uh, very useful for us. But the transition, that is to say that we have to transform our data into this format and all our software have to, uh, to, to cope with this uh, format. So it's a huge work that is still uh, undergoing, but we should have this transi transition effective in July, it's just a question of uh, weeks for Euphrosini uh, 4.0. Uh, we are still working on the future uh, DigiLab Euphrosini, of course, uh, with the, our users to know exactly what they need and what would be good to develop. Uh, so now 100% of fixed lab users can use uh, the Euphrosini uh, platform, and uh, we are uh, very happy with that. So. Um, as a conclusion, uh, making our data fair is uh, neither easy nor simple. Actually, this was not my 
my, my job and I had to get out of my uh, comfort area. So uh, we have to think in another way. Uh, our job as a, a data producer, as a physicist, my job is changing. So this is, I have to, to go with it and to, 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 to take care of not only the, the team that is running the accelerator, but also the users and to, to make a big effort in this, uh, in this uh, big challenge. But the iterative process that I, I try to describe my best on the Euphrosini uh, platform is particularly adapted to, to the project. We are going step by step, but now, okay, we, we, are, we don't have a, a Ferrari. We had a skateboard, now we have a bicycle. But the important thing is that users are happy with that, and they, uh, it's better for, uh, for them, uh, for, for their experience. Um, so now it's uh, operational uh, with a high impact, and uh, as I, I will probably have the question, it costs since uh, the beginning of the project, uh, so for uh, two years and a half now, about 30,000 uh, euros. So it's about 12% of the new Aglae project on the, 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 the machine that were uh, automated. Uh, the per perspectives um, are the following. Of course, uh, we will go from a, a bicycle to a, a, a small car, we hope so. Uh, linking our tool to uh, other uh, platforms to make the users experiment um, as, a, as a whole, meaning from, uh, from, from the, the proposal for new Aglae Beam Time to, uh, to, their, uh, to the data processing and so. So, of course, we have to link to the future uh, and existing ARIS digital platforms. Uh, we have to finalize the verification and ferrization processes, which are the, semantically the same differences as digiti digitization and digitalization. Uh, so uh, one of the essential steps will be to work on uh, the experimental notebook to develop uh, to, so that we document exactly what is happening and that information remains with the data sets so that uh, they are really fair. Uh, so uh, I hope we will have Euphrosini 5.0 coming soon. There's a question mark because it's, as always, a question of money. So uh, we hope, of, uh, of course, that uh, this uh, project will uh, feed the big uh, ambitious uh, of uh, the big ambition, sorry, of uh, the uh, Objet Patrimonial Augmenté uh, in the uh, Espadon uh, project. Um, and uh, before I, th I thank all the team and, and you for your attention, I, I want to finish up uh, with uh, André Leroy-Gourand's uh, words, uh, which are, I sincerely believe that the study of humans past is the best warranty that we could have a future uh, that is for sure, but with this uh, digital transition, I don't know what I will give to uh, future generations. If I imagine in 5,000 years, if archaeologists go to the Louvre and they dig, they will find a pyramid. They will say, oh, that was probably cultural, and they will find something in the basement. They will say, oh, what is this? funny things, pipes and so forth. Uh, so probably they will say that there was a priest, that would be me. Uh, but there will be something uh, tangible. Here, with this digital uh, transition, what will we leave to a future generation? This is a huge question mark, and uh, I won't go further because I think everybody wants to have lunch, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Claire. Thank you.